Okay, hi lovelies. So we're gonna go ahead and get you guys a quick chapter video before I have to head off to work. Um, so we are on chapter 23. So if you remember, she talked with the ocean and she made the ocean promise that a Kinley's death would never come due to the ocean. No drowning, she wouldn't cause it, anything like that. And she also promised that she would try better for her sisters. So here we go. Chapter 23, which starts on page 226. Hey, prom queen, he began laughing. Okay, weird change of pace there. I grinned in spite of myself. That's not even a funny joke anymore. Well, you're stuck with it now. I rolled into him on the blanket we were sharing. Oh, this is probably a dream. We rested on the patch of grass between his house and the water. The sun was blinding and I was calmed by the hush of water hitting the sand. A kindly smell of cotton and grass and something dry, maybe books. It was a wonderfully unique scent and I was intoxicated by it. So what do you want to study? He held up a pamphlet in front of me. English, communication. Remember when we met and you were looking at all those cakes? Mmm, cake, I answered dreamily. A Kinley chuckled in, re in reply. You could study culinary arts. What do you think about that? I'd eat every assignment. I'd have nothing left for the professor to grade. He swatted me with the paper. Well, what then? When I go back, you're going with me. What do you want to study? Maybe history, I confessed. You sound ashamed. It just doesn't sound as exciting as being a chemist or a lawyer. I'd probably end up in a museum or something. A Kinley shrugged. Who cares? If you're happy, then that's all that matters. I can show you history. We both sat upright. Whoa. Did you hear that? I asked. He shouldn't have heard anything, nor should I. Not anymore. I can take you across centuries. Stay with me. But I already did, I cried. I hadn't forgotten. Everything I'd been promised was false. Who is that? Who are you talking to? Stay. I can give you everything. She'd gotten stronger, much stronger, and I imagined her forcing tsunamis and pulling down airplanes just to have the energy for this moment. The wind pushed me toward the ocean and kept a kindly rooted to pl in place. Look, he's safe, just as I promised. Now come home. No, no, I gave you all my time. Caitlin, a kindly reached for me, his face agonized. I jerked awake. Sleep had seemed like a good idea. We'd pass hours without disappointing or lying to my sisters. Weirdly enough, there were even days lately when I felt as if I needed rest. For now, it would have to be avoided. I couldn't shake the dream of a kindly hearing the ocean, understanding her call. It gave me a chill. When my heart rate dropped, I went hunting for the girls. It was daybreak and the sun shone harshly through the windows. Elizabeth's honey brown hair was extra golden in the morning light. Hi, I said, coming up to her. She had a wide canvas on the floor and had switched from paintbrushes to brooms. Padma sat quietly watching her. My youngest sister had said less and less as the days passed, but she seemed content with Elizabeth. I watched as Elizabeth swept the broom across the canvas, leaving a wide streak of blue. That's one way to do it, I guess. She laughed. I'm not as gifted as Miyaka. I can't do all that fine tip stuff, but this, this feels like me. I took in the garish strokes, the haphazard color choices. Everything looked as if it could almost be an accident, but you could feel the heart behind it. It absolutely does. Where's Miaka? Oh, she's out, Elizabeth hedged, something slightly off in her voice. Out where? She read about some forest in Iceland that has these really special flowers. If you grind the petals and mix them with oil, it's supposed to make this crazy, vibrant paint. Like, better than anything you could buy in a store. Oh. So how long will that take her? A few days, I guess. The ocean took her to Iceland, but she has to find the actual flowers herself. I stared at the finished paintings scattered around our living room. Miyaka had over a dozen now, enough to call a collection and start selling. I wish she'd taken us with her. I could use a project right now. Then paint something, Elizabeth suggested, dipping her broom in a vat of yellow. Not sure I have anything worth making right now. Don't be silly. Find the right billionaire and he'll buy a streak of green paint on an otherwise blank page for enough to cover three months' rent. She grinned as she went back to her work. I sat down with the charcoals again and tried. I really did. But everything that came out was either the waves of Akinley's hair when he drove with the window down or his still hands when I pulled his body out of the water. 
I stayed away from his face, but he came back to me in a hundred different images. They were nothing but rough scratches across the paper, but I left them in a pile for Miyaka. She could decide what to do with them. When she finally returned four days later, fresh out of the water, I was pleased with how much potential she saw in my sloppy little scribbles. There's something very honest about them, Kaylin. If I had the money, I'd buy them off you right now. I hit her arm. Stop it. I like them, but they're not that good. Nothing like what you make. Well, I'm still going to put them in my showcase. Along with the new stuff with your flower paint? She squinted. Huh? The flowers from Iceland. Are you, aren't you making paint? She laughed and waved a carefree hand at me. Oh, I couldn't even find them. I felt like such a dope wandering around in the woods from all that time. I think a little more research is in order. I'll come with you next time if you want. Miyaka touched my arm. That's really sweet of you. It's nice to see a little bit of Kaylin coming back. I shrugged. Don't give up on me. I'm trying. Never. Miyaka winked at me as I walked to the kitchen. Maybe a little food would boost our collective spirits. Maybe it would fill the hole in my stomach that felt like an eerie hunger. As I turned to open the refrigerator, I noticed Miyaka give Elizabeth a minuscule nod. Elizabeth inhaled deeply, trying to hide a smile. Elizabeth went out back to hose off her brooms, and Miyaka left to find dry clothes, and nothing more came of the exchange. Okay, I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that maybe they've actually been, like, keeping an eye on a Kinley and potentially trying to see if they can get them together. I don't know. I'm just taking a wild guess here. Because I don't think she was actually hunting for flowers. Something seems off about that. A few weeks later, Elizabeth went on a five-day shopping trip. Padma cried, begging her not to leave, but to no avail. Elizabeth insisted it was necessary. Elizabeth had done this a few times in the past, buying so many clothes she shipped them home instead of carrying them. This time she returned with two bags. Two! What can I say? Everything's dreadful this season, she said, tossing her finds in a corner as if they didn't even matter. After that, Miyaka spent a week in Japan reconnecting with her roots for the sake of her art. The entire time she was gone, Elizabeth did nothing but pace from room to room, never settling, as if she couldn't stand her absence. Personally, I didn't understand the trip in the first place. Miyaka had never wanted to go home before, no matter the reason. And when she came back, it looked like the same old art to me. I didn't even try to remember Elizabeth's next excuse for leaving, though I didn't understand her reasons either. If she'd been so antsy for Miyaka to get back and knew how upset Padma was got when she left, why did she go? When she returned, I pounced on them all, determined to end this. Why do you keep running off? I demanded, planting my hands on my hips. Miyaka crossed her arms defensively. I don't know what you mean. I feel like I'm doing a lot better, like I'm so much easier to be around. So why do you keep taking turns bailing and leaving Padma to babysit me? No one is babysitting you, Elizabeth argued, throwing herself down on the couch. We're just... We've just been thinking it would be nice to spend time alone occasionally, like Ashlyn used to. Padma jumped on board. Yeah. My eyes, my eyes pounced between them, having a difficult time imagining that was true. Elizabeth and Miyaka had been inseparable for decades, and it seemed like Padma fit right in. Why now? What had happened? Are you fighting? I asked, still skeptical. No. Elizabeth was dripping all over the couch. Are you upset with me? Miyaka walked over, her expression tender. No, not in the slightest. We've been curious about Ashlyn's method, that's all. But it's strange to stay away for so long. She turned to Elizabeth. I don't know how she went for months. Me neither. I'd be miserable without you, Padma nodded. I didn't want to comment that she didn't seem that happy in the first place. One argument at a time. So, so everything's fine, I asked. I placed a hand on my forehead, feeling a little dizzy. The same feeling had washed over me three times in the last week, forcing me into bed until my head cleared. Yes. Oh. I backed away, my brain muddled from the woozy feeling and the confusion over their absences. Sorry, things have been off for me lately. Miyaka smiled. We know. And we're here for you. Or there for you, Elizabeth added, pointing a graceful arm toward the ocean. A chill ran through me. When it lingered, I wrapped myself in blankets and retreated to my room, disappointed in myself. Was I becoming paranoid? I breathed, reminding myself of my promise. I was going to be an exemplary sister. It wouldn't do for me to go around accusing them of things I needed to take up a ho- Oh, accusing them of things. I needed to take up a hobby or something. 
There was too much free time to, uh, ooh, I skipped a page. Too much free time, too much space for my mind to wander. If I was going to keep my promise and try to live without a Kinley, I needed to find something else to think about. A few days later, I was forced to think about someone other than a Kinley. We all had to focus on Padma whether we wanted it to or not. She still can't forget. She wants her father to suffer as she did. Miyaka's face was solemn as she faced me across the table. Beside her, tears ran down Padma's face. Elizabeth sat on her other side, her hand lightly, her hand lightly on our youngest sister's shoulder. I felt awful. I'd known she was sad, but I didn't think it was that bad. It had been over a year. We'd already had a second and more somber Christmas together and sat watching the ball drop in New York on New Year's Eve. Padma sorrowfully wished she could have been there for that. We were seeing commercials for Valentine's Day now, and Padma no longer was no longer a fresh siren. None of it made sense. Why, I asked. We all forget our past. How can you still remember so much? It's because she's still angry, Elizabeth guessed. My thoughts went back to our brownstone when a very similar th theory had occurred to me. Miyak has forgiven her family, so she doesn't remember details. And I know you've forgotten almost everything. But I remember more than either of you, and Padma went through so much more than any of us. I remember enough. My parents didn't really appreciate me either, Miyaka admitted, looking at Padma. It wasn't quite as dire as your situation, but it was close. Padma nodded. They might not have rejoiced in my death, but I doubt they mourned, Miyaka continued. If you think that thought hasn't haunted me, you're wrong. We all suffer our regrets, she gestured to each of us. I nodded. I felt immeasurable guilt over the loss of my family, as if maybe I could have undone it somehow. Then there were the tens of thousands of lives I sang into the grave. I carried them like a weight around my, around my neck. <sighs> and always, probably forever, I can't leave. But you can't, but you cannot go seeking revenge, Miyaka told Padma firmly. Padma sighed, wiping away her tears. It just feels like an injustice. He killed me. My mother let him. No one will come looking for me. No police will come for them. It's not fair. Miyaka shook her head. What, I shot you think she should go, don't you? Elizabeth shrugged. She hadn't told us if she had gone out on her own. It would be done by now, and none of us would have been the wiser. The ocean would have been, I replied. If Pama had hopped into the ocean and gone back to India, she certainly would have read her thoughts. The ocean might have killed her for trying to take revenge. I placed my arm in Padma's arm. And after, oh my God, I keep yawning. And after what you've been through to die now, it'd be the greatest loss. She could have made it, Elizabeth muttered. I closed my eyes, trying to keep a hold on my temper. I'm sorry for your suffering, Padma, I told her. You have no idea how much I ache for you. Maybe it's selfish, but I don't need another reason to hate this life. If we lost you now, I didn't want to think about it. What do you mean another reason, Padma asked? What else has happened? Miyaka glanced quickly at me. She had kept what, I, what had happened to me, my love, and the bargain I made with the ocean, private, waiting for me to be ready to tell the others. I swallowed. It's a difficult life, I said dismissively. You hurt people, you lose people you love. Elizabeth leaned in. Who have you loved? I love, uh, I nearly caved. I missed him so badly. I wondered what he was doing every day. Did he think of me? Was he with someone else? Did he go back to school? Was he happy? I loved Ashlyn and Marilyn. Eventually, we all get separated. And I loved my family. I smiled to myself. I was a lucky girl. I was treasured. Elizabeth seemed disappointed, maybe hoping I'd have something juicy to share, but Miyaka spoke up. You've never talked about them much. I know you had brothers, but that's about it. I pulled together a few scraps of memory I still had of my family. I looked like my mother. I can't remember a little bit. I can remember a little bit of her face because I see it in mine. My father was proud of me, mostly because I was beautiful, I think. And he told me often how sharp I was and how easy I was to converse with. And I was obedient. I nodded to myself. They appreciated that. A trait you never lost, Elizabeth commented. I smirked, well, almost never. I've made my share of mistakes, as you've so astutely pointed out. And why not? Elizabeth planted her cheek on her hand, staring me down. What has this obedience ever gotten you? It's gotten me a second chance, Elizabeth. She shook her head. If I had to guess, I'd say it cost you your only chance. Her words brought back, brought back a vaguely familiar feeling. The way my body had felt when I fell into the ocean during my sinking. Hard, sharp, and all too real. Yaka hit her arm. 
stop it. In case she'd forgotten, she's carrying 15 more years on her back right now. You know what she's going through. Elizabeth rolled her eyes as if it were nothing. Sorry. What if I got, what if I asked the ocean, Padma proposed? What if she let me go? Elizabeth clapped her hands and pointed. That's one hell of an idea. Ask the ocean. I bet if we brought their bodies to her, she'd be grateful. Miyaka was quiet, considering. That's possible. Kaylin, Padma asked, can we go? Who was I to say no? You can ask, but we all have to agree that what the ocean says is final. Whatever it is, we will abide by it and drop it. You're assuming she'll say no, Elizabeth accused. Yes, I am. I don't know why she'd say yes. Then you must agree that if she does, you're coming. We won't leave this all on Padma. I pulled back, shocked. That's insane. I refuse to take any life. I don't absolutely have to. Elizabeth glared at me. I always thought we were all in this. You were the one who preached solidarity and support. And now you're leaving the most damage of us to fend for herself. I'm not leaving her to anything. The ocean will never agree. Elizabeth pushed back her chair. Let's see about that. She led the charge down the snow-covered ground to the water, so sure of herself. She was at our newest sister's side as Padma pleaded her case, vowed to care she would take, vowed the care she would take, and promised to bring the bodies of her parents back to the ocean in return if she was allowed to avenge her death. No. But please, Padma begged, can't you see how unfair this is? I do. But the secrecy of our world is far more valuable than your revenge. A single misstep could ruin everything. You cannot go. Padma began crying and rushed out of the water. Elizabeth followed, shaking her head. Don't let her do anything foolish. I won't, I promise, knowing that command was for me. Miyaka held my hand as we made our way back to the house. Thank goodness our waterfront home was isolated because Padma's wills were piercing. I'm torn, Miyaka said, her, eye, her own eyes filling with tears. There were so many times I wished I could show my parents that I wasn't worthless, that I was smart and creative. I wanted them to know what I was capable of. To watch her suffer is so painful. The ocean said Padma had a gentle mind and that she'd already let go of a lot. Eventually, it'll all be gone. Nyaka shook her head. That makes it a thousand times worse. If she's already let go of so many memories, how much must there have been for her to still, still feel so victimized? Days went on and Padma's tears carried on. I tried to focus on other things and failed. Miyaka's brush hung over the canvas, creating nothing. Elizabeth was undistracted. It wasn't Padma's crying or, me, or Elizabeth's anger that finally wore me down. It was Miyaka, who, as always, had found the simple truth in everything. She was right. Padma's past must have been horrific for her to carry on this way. She deserved her revenge. So I was the one who researched trips to India and chose a direct flight out of Miami. We could have flown from the airport nearest our home in Washington State and had not and not had to drive cross country, but I felt the farther we traveled over land from where the ocean thought we were, the more the more likely we'd be able to escape her notice. I was the one who rented the car, and I was the one who begged Padma to quiet herself so we could get to Florida without the ocean knowing. And as much as I don't want to leave you guys there, I do have to head off to work, so. Yeah, that's that. And I don't know where I, there it is. Um, so they're gonna go get revenge. How nice. So yeah, I'll upload this video for you guys. And until the next one, ta-ta.